sometime during our training. Uh, but then we started looking at the instruments. Fred, think what happened. Well, I, I mean, the first thing for me was, uh, as Jim implied, was confusion. Uh, you know, what had happened. <clears throat> the possibility of, because uh, it was a very large uh, uh, metallic uh, bang with this, uh, where I was uh, just approaching the tunnel, the metal in the tunnel was crinkling, uh, making popping noise, uh, because when that panel we saw later went off, it went off to the side and put a big... Uh, uh, pending force of torque onto that uh, service module, and that put enough bending, I guess, to uh, stress the metal in the tunnel area. So it's like popping a little tin can or something. But that, you know, the motion settled out, and uh, the, the uh, instrument array was very confusion. We have uh, an array of things called caution warning lights. Uh, some are red, and some are uh, orangish yellow looking. The red ones uh, generally mean something pretty bad. Uh, the orange yellow ones are something not right, but not so bad. And there were about seven of those on, and we had a blue computer restart light, and we had the master alarm on. And it didn't resemble anything I had ever seen in my life, obviously, <laughs> in training or anywhere else. So, uh, but within probably a minute, scanning the instruments uh, where I had the electric power and the fuel cells, cryogenics, uh, it was clear that we lost oxygen tank too, because three different transducers powering different things uh, indicated the needle was all down in the bottom of the gauges, so it's unlikely you get three transducers failures simultaneously. So then I would just sicken my stomach, because I knew we had, uh, without reference in the thing called mission rules, I knew we had an abort. Uh, from then on, we got real busy with uh, Gene and uh, the gang downstairs troubleshooting things. Uh, so, and it really wasn't a life-threatening thing, incidentally, at that point. We st I still thought we had a second oxygen tank. So I thought it was just an abort. We're going to come home ASAP, which is what the mission rule would read. And we had lost the landing. I looked at Jack Sweck, and of course, what I looked at, I looked at Fred and found out that he, his expression didn't tell me anything. And I looked at Swanker, and Swanker's eyes were as wide as saucers. <laughs> And uh, not only was not only did he not know what was going on, but he was saying to himself, "Why am I here? <laughs> Family should should run here. <laughs> Why did I take this job?" <laughs> and then we all got together. I have to tell you, I, I I know you and Fred. We know where you were when this happened. Uh, we know where Charlie was. We know where Gene was. I have to be sitting in my apartment in Houston, and I just cranked up the television. Uh, to watch ABC report on the flight of Apollo 13. There was a guy who was a science editor for ABC. His name was Jules Bergman. Mm -hmm. If anybody remembers Jules Bergman. He was a science reporter. He was an erstwhile astronaut. In his biography, if you pick it up today, he will tell you that he trained with the astronauts. Right? His training consisted, back in the days of the Mercury 7, you probably remember all this, he put on a swimming suit down at Cocoa Beach and go out and frolic in the surf with his original seven. That was his training um, as an astronaut. Anyway, he reported the explosion at Apollo 13. And this is where I have a little bit of a problem with the media sometimes. Maybe they're not so bad today, but they were there. Because on his television show reporting on the Apollo 13 explosion, he said the crew had three hours to live kind of jumped ahead of where things were, since nobody really knew what was going on, or what the problem was, and what the recovery was going to be. So, I don't know, Gene, whether you ever saw that report of his or not, but uh, that's, what he, uh, that's what he said. Um, obviously, uh, I was in my apartment down in Houston, I jumped in my car and went over to uh, Mission Control, as Charlie did. I think there were. I think everybody I knew got over there that day uh, to see what we could do. Um, we have a little video of that night. Can we show that, please? <laughs> <laughs> 